Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Kick It With Russ. Um, for today's vlog, I'll be talking about my conversion on a Red Cat Lightning STK chassis, which I converted to a rear wheel drive setup. So yeah, here it is. Let me go ahead and show you. That's the chassis here. Um, this is what an original one looks like. I'll put it sideways. Uh, I'll just put it like this. That way you can see it. Got the 180 body for this one. I haven't really ran this. This is this was just a complete stock donor chassis. And then this is the one I had, which I um, also got donated. Um, then I converted it to a rear wheel drive chassis, as you can see. Um, that's the body for it. That's a Pandora A86. And then of course the 180 again. But anyways, yeah, so let me show you guys, um, well, let me tell you guys a little bit of what I did to this chassis, uh, to making it a rear wheel drive. I know there's a lot of videos out there with people converting it. Um, they're pretty good, but I didn't see too many with uh, a center mount motor, which I did here. Um, most of the guys would usually just leave it in the standard form, which is on the side, the battery pack here. And then of course they would change out the the front end and do a delete a C hub delete, which um, for mine's I actually kept all the C hubs, the factory C hubs, and didn't delete it, but just made enough clearance just to run it. So here it is. I'll show you guys up close. Um, so what I did was I pretty much let me put this down here. I pretty much uh, just notched out. I gutted out the. The front diff casing here and then and I see notched it that way the steering can pass through as you can see just like that and the angle is pretty crazy look at that I mean as far as the lead rim I mean I can actually get it to go more in but it's pretty good for what it is without having to uh, swap out the whole front end but anyways um, yeah so I just got two aluminum pieces here that I cut it out, maybe in like about two inches of length, and then drill a couple holes, you know, that way um, you can make these tie rods actually, uh, the way it works is it'll push the wheel out further, rather than having it like this on the stock length, where it only has a limit of going that much, that much of a travel, unless you change out the end here to a maybe like a 45 or so that way you can get a full stuff but at even that you'll still have like a short distance because you still have the c hub which everyone deletes and it ends up hitting the knuckle just as you see in here but as for this one i actually chopped half of the c hub here See that? And then I grinded down the, uh, I grinded down the lower arm there, if you, as you can see. And then this is how the stock one looks like. Oh shoot, let me take this off here. Right Sorry guys, but this is what the stock arms look like. And then, this is kind of hard doing it with one hand while I'm recording. But this is what the modified one looks like. I also cut it the front bumper as you can see. I mean, it's not a nice job, but for what it is and to keep everything um, factory as possible without having to convert the whole thing is pretty, I mean, it's decent. Uh, it works. Um, also for here, So the front shock, I actually made an extra hole here to put it more on the inner side. That way we have steering clearance. As you can see how close it gets. So when you put, you know, some droop on this thing, see that? You got quite a bit of clearance there. Um, with it, with it mounted in the original spot, which are these holes here it'll actually rub so 
that will actually affect your counter steer and all that stuff, that good stuff. So yeah, it helps to make an extra hole and try centering the shock just to get it out of the way. But there's a lot of guys who do a lot of different ways and stuff like that. So, I mean, this is one way I did it just to keep it simple and easy. Like, like I said, my main goal was to keep this as simple as possible. And for guys at home who wanna modify their Red Cat uh, Lightning STK or whatever, Red Cat uh, HSP, Flying Fish, whatever, whatever that is, um, you know, if they want to just keep the original parts and have it done the same way I did it, that's pretty much why I'm doing this. Um, so for the top deck, I cut it a piece of aluminum mount. I had to do this because when I center mounted that motor, as you can see here, there wasn't enough clearance. And then I made this, uh, this bracket here, which is just an L bracket. You can find this bracket it's, it comes in a long piece at a local Home Depot and you just chop it down to maybe like an inch and a half and you drill your holes for the screws here and then of course you're notching for the two motor screws and then just go ahead and just center it. It's super simple. It's an easy task. I mean if you got the skill of uh, you know and you got the skill and doing a lot of hands-on things this is actually a pretty easy conversion to do. Um, well, the way I did it, I wanted to keep it simple, like I said. Um, I grinded down the, the bottom here, right in the center. So I took this out on this side, just so I could fit a battery pack sideways. Um, the reason why I did that was because of the weight balance. Um, like, like I said, the original chassis, the battery is sitting sideways here, which I wanted to balance out everything. So I went ahead and mounted it sideways i could fit a shorty pack in there like a two cell stuff but i have this laying around i just velcroed it in so i can remove it anytime i want and then i left the stock esc in there switch it um i actually switched it over to lipo setting um the stock motor which which you wouldn't even believe it does wonderful keeping up with you know other cars on the track um well because it's brushed so it has that that drag which helps a lot um, using a fly sky controller here, uh, simple FS GT3C. This works fine. Um, I'm also running a Yokomo YG302. Um, what is this called? A gyro. Um, works perfect. Um, that actually I got from my YD2 kit and you know I had to put it to use, so why not? And I converted my YD2. I'm not converted, but I installed the new V4 gyro. Um, I highly suggest getting a really good gyro. The V4 from Yokomo, as far as sensitivity wise, that thing is awesome. It it has a perfect, I don't know, it's just a, the sensitivity is really responsive and it's smooth. It's not like the old, you know, the YG302. This one is real finicky, I could see. Um, compared to the V4, so I highly suggest that. Also, when building a rear-wheel drive um, chassis or a drift car, whatever, always get a good servo. Like, this cars come stock with, like, slow servos, and this one I just had laying around. It's a JR Racing. Um, it works well. It, it does its job, but running the Yokomo servo, I don't know, it's just, or any um, servo that's quicker than what stock is will help you out a lot especially when you're trying to you know when you're doing stuff like counter steer drifting so going back to this um, I got the stealth mounts here front and back um, I changed out the springs these are stock struts I changed out the springs to um, the YD2 Yokomo YD2s that come factory with the chassis which you can actually buy separately but the springs come green and then pink on the rear which are soft and then just a little bit stiffer but my oil in here is actually 15 weight uh, which i like because they're soft you want that body movement you know what i mean and then these are the stock which are stiff as you can see and this is the 15 weight and then the other thing that i did was i actually cutted this out here the stoppers for the lower arms. 
These ones still have it on. As you can see, there's that tab there that stops the arm from traveling. That's one trick you can do just to get the suspension travel that you want. Look at that. But yeah. Um, but anyways, I'll be showing you guys a little demo of how this runs. Um, like I said, depending on the track or the layout and whatnot, and of course, you know, it takes time and skill to get used to it because this ain't like a really um, built to, you know, actually be a real -wheel drive car. It's something that you just customize and, you know, go from there and test it out, tune it and see what you can do with it. That's, that's all. pretty much what you want to do is have fun with it. And it, it does take more skill to, you know, convert something like this and get it to run perfectly fine. Like last night, I just actually, you know, adjusted camber on all these vehicles. Oh, not this one, but I adjusted camber on this. It's negative one on the rear and the fronts are negative three. Um, I like to keep it more on the, the um, less camber, I would say, because of the, the tire. Um, well, you want more contact on the tire to get more speed. That's one thing that you really want is in order to tandem with some of the guys, you got to have speed. So, yeah, the perfect thing about this is it just goes on just like that. So I highly suggest you get some stealth magnetic body mounts. Um, these are not the best rims. I'm using Yokomo DRC tires. Um, the cool thing about the Pandora body, I mounted it with a... Uh, you know, the bumpers can come off, but I actually have mini magnets here. Just snap it right in place. Just like that. Cool, huh? Just take out the rears. So, you know, when you're drifting and someone hits it off, it'll come off, but you don't have to worry. You just put it back on like that. Boom. Magnets. So, yeah, guys, I'm going to show you guys a little demo. I got a little layout here going on. And... Yeah, I'll show you guys how it handles. All right, guys, so I got the battery plugged in. As I was saying, the gyro. This is the YG302. Um, I actually got it turned down. As you can see, it's not as fast. I mean, you don't want it too sensitive. And for many of you who's wondering, you know, like for me, while I was browsing the, the internet, I was trying to figure out like, you know, how are people locking their diffs? Are they locking their diffs? Are they leaving it open? For the wheel wheel drive setup um i noticed for like the yd2 yokomos they use heavy weight uh oil which reacts as like a 1.5 lsd for like a real you know vehicle um it does have a little slight tension and but it's not fully locked you, you kind of don't want it fully locked because you want that um that movement i don't know if you guys have ever tried it but if you fully lock a diff everything becomes stiffer and um of course, it's like a real car when you weld the differential. Everything's just chattery and stuff like that. But if you actually get it to play and has some kind of free load on it, at least, you know, the vehicle can still function as an open diff, but still, you know, be able to lock it up when it needs to with the amount of um, torque that the motor is putting out. So it's, it's amazing how this thing reacts similar to a, a real car. But yeah, here it is.
I hope you guys enjoyed that little footage of me drifting my Red Cat Lightning here. Um, so in order for it to, you know, drive really well, of course, you need to set it up um, to what your driving preference is, whether it's the camber, the toe, the, the suspension, um, you want it to kick out more. And of course, what helps a lot is the weight transfer and the gyro. Um, if you can set the gyro up, well you can actually compensate it from spitting out you know it, it just it'll help you out in the long run but and also it'll help you do bigger drifts so it'll hold that angle and stuff and such but um yeah so here it is stock and of course the red cat or i mean these are same as the hsp the fly fish whatever chassis they, they call it and yeah, so hope you guys like this video. I hope it was helpful and you guys enjoyed it. But yeah, go ahead and build you guys self a budget rear wheel drive car here like I did and have fun with it. But yeah, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, hit that notification button down below for more updated videos. I'll be drifting more. Uh, we finally got a RC track here, a local RC track, which my friend opened up, which is... Um, Aloha RC Drift Track. Yeah, you can go ahead and follow it on the uh, IG. I'll have it on the description below. So, yeah, peace out.